welcome this morning. We want to welcome our new people. Now we've got some new folks in the house. Welcome to Living Faith this morning. Come on, we just invite you guys to stand. Hope you've come ready to worship. Amen. Come on, why don't you join us this morning? We're going to sing of his love. Amen. Let's hold nothing back this morning. Here we go. Words can never say the way he says my name. He calls me lovely. No one ever sees the way he looks at me. He sees me holy. The earth could never hold this love that burns my soul. Heaven. Touches me, he burns right through me. I could not forget every word he said, he always knew me. The earth could never hold this love that burns my soul. Heaven holds me, heaven holds. second verse you would not believe you would not believe the way he touches me he burns right through me and I could not forget every word he said he always knew me the earth could never hold this love that burns my soul heaven holds me heaven holds Sing it out, sing my love. I can't hold my love back from you. I can't hold my love back from you. I've got to say, oh, I've got to say, sing my I'm 
Sing, I can't hold my praise back from you. Here we go. I can't hold my praise back from you, Lord. I can't hold my praise back from you. I've got to shout it. Oh, I've got to shout it. Shout your praise, God. I can't hold my praise back from you, Lord. I can't hold my praise back from you. Oh, I've got to shout it. Oh, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, my soul makes, makes us boast in the Lord, oh, praise it, oh, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, my soul makes, makes us boast in the Lord, come on one more time, I can't hold my praise, back from you. I can't hold my praise back from you. I've got to shout. Oh, I've got to shout. Shout your praises, Lord. Every day, Father. I can't hold my praise back from you. I can't hold my praise back from you. I've got to shout. Oh, shout. Shout your Thank you, amen. That is love never fails us, amen. Stays the same, hallelujah. Come on, nothing can separate us from his love, hallelujah. Separate. Even if I ran away, your love never fails. Praise God. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. Hallelujah. Yes, God. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, oh, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, no. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails Oh no, 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 no The wind is strong The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not alone here in these open seas Your love never fails The chasm is far too wide but I never reach the other side Your love never fails No, no You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes 
There may be pain in my night, but joy comes in the morning, yeah, yeah. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, no. Because I know that you love me. Things. Come on, sing it out. Work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Come on, he turns situations around. Amen. You make all things work together for my good. Come on, thank him. Yes, Lord. All things work together for my good. Oh, we trust you, Lord. You make all things work together for my good. Hold the favor that surrounds me. Yeah. All things work together for my good. Oh, I'm standing on your word, God. You make all things work together for my good, my good, Lord. You make all things work together for my good. Oh, we're going to sing it again. You may. Come on. You may. Oh, come on. Believe it over your situation right now. Yes, hallelujah. Give it to him this morning. He makes all things work together for your good. Amen. Come on. You're coming out of it. You're coming out of the other side. Amen. Come on. Do you believe it? You got to believe it. You got to show it. You got to show that you believe it. Come on. Believing looks like something, people. Believing looks like something. Come on! You made all things work together for my good. Yes, gotta believe it. You made all things work together for my good. Come on, one last time, sing it out. You made all things work together for my good. You made all things work together. Stay the same through the ages. Your love, it never changes, God. There be pain in my night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rain, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Because your love never Your love never fails. Oh, you haven't failed me yet. You're not gonna fail me, Lord. No, yeah. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Oh, your love never fails. Your love never fails. Oh, no, no. Oh, cause you make all things work together for my good, God. All together for my good, Lord. I put my trust in you, Lord. I put my trust in you, Father. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. Woo. Praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Praise your name, God. We don't have to be afraid of the raging seas. We don't have to be afraid of, of the mountains in front of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. No fear lingers here. Woo. Peace. Peace and joy in our homes. Amen. Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his home. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, we bless you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. He forgives all my sin, heals all my diseases, redeems my life from destruction, crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, and he, 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 he increases my strength. Hallelujah. Like the eagles. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are good. We bless you. Bless the Lord. See, bless the Lord. Bless, let's see, bless the Lord. See, a lot of times people just don't know what blesses the Lord. But the Bible tells us what blesses the Lord. Over in Hebrews chapter 13, you don't have to turn to it, but go to it on the screen if you could, Tim. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 15, says this. 15 says, that's good too, but 15 says, Therefore by Him let us continually, say continually, not on Sunday and not on Wednesday, but continually. Let's what? Offer the sacrifice. Y'all glad Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for us. But it says we can offer a sacrifice to God. Right back to Him. What does God, what is God blessed by? It says that you will offer a sacrifice of what? Praise. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wait a minute, I'm offering a sacrifice. See, a sacrifice sometimes does not, is not something that feels good. You know, if you put a sacrifice on the altar, it's trying to get off. It don't want to be there. See, a lot of times people come to church and they don't really feel like praising. They say, when I get a good feeling, I'll praise. When it feels good, I'll shout. Well, really, you might have to fake it till you make it. And you might have to praise God just because He said to. Amen. He said, offer me a sacrifice of what? Praise. Praise. What does that look like? It looks like that is. Look at the definition. He said, that is. What do you mean, Lord? Well, that is this. That is what? That is what? This right here. That is the fruit of your lips. I praise the Lord in my heart. I just, me and Lord got a personal thing going on. I praise Him in my heart. No, He don't want praise just coming out of your heart. He wants it to continually fill your lips. David says, your praise will continually be in my what? Mouth. I wonder if God's real pleased with... Praise God. Hallelujah. Give you praise this morning, Lord. Let me get stretched. Let me wake up. Now he gets praise when you come in and say, I'm going to get a sacrifice on right now. Hey, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Your lips. Your lips. Your lips. Your lips. Your lips. <laughs> a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips, giving thanks to his name. Say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God. We give you praise, which is the fruit of our lips. We're not going to read about it. We're going to do it. We're not going to, Father God, acknowledge it and just amen it. We're going to rejoice, hallelujah, with the fruit of our lips today. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, continually. We have this in us, coming out of us, and we are, Father God, the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. And we thank you for this opportunity today, just to come into your presence again and bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord. What blesses Him? The fruit of your lips opening up your mouth and giving Him thanks and giving Him praise. We thank You, Father, right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You. It's not our religious duty. It's our lifestyle. We thank You in Jesus' name. Father God, we continually give You praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You've been so good to us. We thank You, Father, in Jesus' name today for every person. Hallelujah. In this place, we thank you, Father. We'll all receive a word from heaven. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. Everybody say it.
Amen. Turn around, find about five people and shake their hand and you'll be blessed this morning. Hallelujah. like a Wednesday night service almost <laughs> to me. Praise God. Yes, we, we have a lot of people on traveling and on vacation. We have some vacationers in town. I want to welcome the Gleason. 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 Not Gleason. Gleason. The Gleason. Amen. From uh, St. Augustine, which is around right over toward Jacksonville. Yeah. They're pastors in Jacksonville on vacation, came over here to lay down on the beach and just lay there. So this is a good thing to do. You go to vacation just to lay down, amen. So it's good to have them this morning and you just make them welcome and be blessed, amen. Praise God. So I have a lot of announcements this morning. I want to go over very quickly, not very, I don't want to take long. We have a video to show about VBS. First announcement is about that. This entire 17,000 square feet in the front of this building is decorated just like this. Today, it's all coming down. <laughs> all of it's coming down today. So we need help, if you could, staying for one hour. One hour, two people in each room. It, it won't take near as long to take it down as it did to put it up. But we're going to organize it, keep it organized, and put it away neatly. So we want everyone, like I said, you could, we're going to start in the, in the fellowship hall, and all the kids' rooms are decorated like this in the middle section and in the back section back here. So about two people in each room would be great. <laughs> Amen. That's close to all the people here right now. So we need you guys, if you could, to just make that effort, make that about an hour. Just we'll stay, and we're going to pull all the stuff down so we can redecorate for our back-to-school outreach. Amen. It won't be near like this, but that is coming up right now. So, Tim, if you could, jump over if you can and uh, put the back-to-school outreach slide on. This is what we have going here. And out in the foyer, you'll see our fundraiser that we're doing. And we're just buying squares right off the board. And uh, last week, there's only 18 left. There's 50 spots we started with. That means 30 people got spots on the first day 
Amen. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. It was the fruit of your lips. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So God is, see what happens right here, this whole, this whole board gets clear. We have all the funds we need to do our back to school outreach. We have 18 more squares left and I'm praying and my prayer is that you just walk by and the Lord deal with your heart. And uh, how many of y'all know in Philippians, Paul said that the Philippian church gave to him once and what? Again. So don't think, well I already did that one time. Well I did it one time too and I did it again Wednesday. Amen. I did it Sunday morning. I did it Wednesday night. I'm going to do it again this morning. Say amen. 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 Well, I've given once. Well, how many of y'all don't want to just be an uh, over and above giver? Say, you know what? I give. I, I'm all on that right there. The easy, this is, this is simple. 18 people taking 18 squares and we got a whole thing knocked out. Just pray about it. And the Lord, if he deals with you to support the work, then you just give toward it. If he says, I don't want you to give anything toward that right there, don't give. That's a check. We all think God would say, I, I, I'd prefer you not give in that right there. See, so a lot of times we try to make ourselves think we've heard the Lord say, you know what, you could do a lot better things with your money. I don't think you could myself. But turn in your Bibles to Psalm 20. Psalm 20. Wanted to make a quick announcement. We're going to have more formal announcements about Bible College too. We had 24 Bible College. 24 Bible College graduates last year, uh, what was uh, end of May, end of May, first part of June, and uh, 24 Bible College graduates graduated in Christ Bible College, Mark Hankins Bible College. We're starting that again. It's right back on us. Orientation is in two and a half weeks, uh, three weeks. We're starting uh, right at three weeks. It will be three Mondays from now. The uh, so. You thought you had a break. It just didn't last too long. Amen. A lot of you guys, and I'm sitting there like, for real, man. I mean, we're going from Sunday, th Monday. Uh, praise the Lord. Here we go again. Let's do it. We're going to have to have Tuesday because we're off third year Bible college. We have first year Bible college, second year Bible college, and third year. So if the Lord deals with you, I don't know of anything better you could do than to come and increase your knowledge of God's Word. I really don't, I can't think of anything better for you to do on a Monday night than to come and really, Danielle and I moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma to graduate from Rama Bible Training Center, uh, which was a six hour move for us away from family. This is so cool because you can come for three hours on a Monday night and it is, I mean, not even that big of a sacrifice. Keep your own job, keep your house, praise God, have all your family still where they are and if, you're, for, if your family's around here and just come attend Bible College on Monday night. Amen. Danielle and I lost family, rented out our house, moved up, sold everything. Come, it was, But it was a blessing. I'll say that. We got friends all over the country now we never would have had, and God is doing things. This is a Rama affiliate church, and really, I argued with the Lord about going to Bible college. I said, Lord, we got too much going on. We've seen 10,000 born again in northwest Louisiana. I'm not moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to Bible college. All of a sudden, the Lord said, I mean, you, just, you don't ever win your arguments with the Lord. How many of y'all know? I argued for three months. I'm not, I don't need to go. I don't need to go. He said, you need to go. Come down here to this church. Long story short, this is a Rhema affiliate church under their 501c3. When you give, it's going to the, under the uh, umbrella of Rhema Bible Training Center in Tulsa. And really, I could not come and pastor this church for three and a half to four years ago had I not obeyed about ten years ago. Amen. How many of y'all know God sees the end from the very beginning? Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. So if you just have it on your heart, you know what? I'd love to come and hear the word and get three hours of word on Monday night. That might be God saying, I need you to go do that. You may think right now, well, Al, that's just that's nothing I need. But there's something on the inside of you saying, you do. You might try to talk yourself out of it, but God might be trying to get you because he, know he knows what's coming 12 years from now. Amen. He knows what God, God sees, I mean, He knows what He has for you in the future. He knows the future better than you know the past. Amen. Psalm 20, verse number 6. That was a few announcements. Praise God. We went over it. And we'll go quickly on this offering as well. Anybody come ready to give? Anybody awake? Woo! Praise God. Turn over. So, <laughs> Psalm 20, verse number 6, says, Now I know. How many of y'all glad now you know? How many of y'all glad now you know? Now I know that the Lord saves His anointed. 
He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Go back to verse 6. It says, now I know. What do you know? I know the Lord saves his anointed. How many of y'all glad that God saves his anointed? How many of y'all glad you are his anointed? Jesus was the anointed one, and now the anointed one come to live inside of us, and we are his anointed. How many of y'all glad financially God will save his what? Anointed. How many of y'all glad God from heaven? Watch what it says. He will answer from his holy heaven. How many of y'all glad that God has an answer for all your problems? How many of y'all know the Bible says He will answer you from heaven? Your answer is God in heaven. How many of y'all know nothing on this earth, the economy, the, uh, what's going on in the financial realm, none of that means anything if your answer is on the throne? My goodness, and I promise I'll just sit up here until we all start shouting. You can get sleepy, stay sleepy. I said your answer is still on the throne today no matter all your problems. Hallelujah. I said it's always. You, he, and he will answer from heaven. Amen. How many of y'all glad if he's answering from heaven and I got trouble, I don't really have any trouble anymore. See, the enemy's real, real tricky to try to get you to look at your trouble when really you need to be looking at your answer. He says, you got a problem, you got a problem. You say, no, i got an answer. And he's answering me from what? Heaven. Now the main thing you have to do is make sure you stay connected to heaven. How I many of y'all want to make sure the throne room, your connection is solid right there? i got a solid connection with heaven, therefore I've always connected to my answer. The answers always flow through me. I'm an answer. I'm, I'm a solution. I'm not a problem. Amen. I show up. I brought a solution with me. Why? Because I'm hooked up with the answer himself. He answers me from heaven every time I call. Whatever situation. Need money. I, he, I call. He answers. Need wisdom. I call. He answers. Need strength. I call. He answers from heaven. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, natural strength. But we know we have to remember there's a God in heaven that has all my answers. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Golly. Hey, amen. There's a God in heaven that has all of your answers. If you're busy looking at your problems, your trouble, your lack, your insufficiency, you're looking at the wrong things because the answer says, He shall supply. How many of y'all glad the God in heaven has a supply for every need that you have? Whether it's wisdom, friends, family, finances, whatever it is, He's your answer. He has a supply and it says He will answer you from heaven. He saves His anointed. God has your back. How many of you guys are excited that God has my back? It's not just me alone anymore. Now He is. It says with the strength of His mighty right hand. What? It's just not me by myself anymore. Me. He says, Lo, I will be with you. What? Always. Even to the ends of the world. What does this mean? It says that some trust in the wrong things, but we have our trust in the right thing. And really, it comes down to simple trust. You know, giving in the offering comes down to a simple trust. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm trusting God. Me and God got a connection. I got a connection. The God in heaven has all my answers. And I'm connected with Him. See, some people, the Bible says, if you observe the wind and the clouds, you will not sow. That means you're looking at the natural. You're depending on the natural. You're not looking to God of heaven with all your answers. So if you will just say, you know what? I'm, I can, I'm, I'm going to give first of all to God. I'm putting Him what? First, because He's the answer for all my trouble. That's pretty good teaching. Amen. Whether I get a look or not. I said, do not be afraid of their faces. And you know what? Just not afraid of no faces. Amen. You know what? I'm just telling you right now, every answer you need is on the throne right now. Every answer is on the throne right now. How's your connection right now? 
As, how, how many of y'all know your connection? The Bible says this, that we give unto God and he gives back to us good measure. See, it sounds like an exchange, just a, a constant exchange. He gives, we receive. He, we give, we receive. We give, we receive. What happens? My connection. I come this morning, I give my offering, and I say, you know what? I believe my answer is from the throne room of heaven right now. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to give. I thank you in Jesus' name that we give right now, knowing that every answer that we need comes from God, comes from heaven, comes from the throne room. And I thank you in Jesus' name right now, every person giving. Father God, I thank you that they give and their trust is solely in you, not in their job, not in the economy, not in anything of this world. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Go ahead, ushers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got a quick little video, just a recap of Vacation Bible School. Uh, that was two weeks ago. It was the beginning of July. And uh, about 50 kids, 50 plus kids, had their lives changed forever that week. And what we have is just a quick little video to show you went, what went on. Some of you parents may have not been there. Some of you people without children that are VBS age may have no idea what it was like. So we just wanted to show everybody at church what we're about, and that's sewn into our kids and changing their lives. And um, so just enjoy this video. And at the end, we got a little thing about a baby shower, August 9th. See Miss Robin if you have any questions about that. All right? Tim, go ahead and cut all the lights. Thanks.
Amen. Let's change it up a bit. We'll we add that at the end. Y'all want to do that? Last song. Thank all of you guys for coming to help to make this possible. And like Chris said, actually there were 60, I think, 7 that registered that week. 63, 67, 4, 64 that registered that week that we were able to minister to. And uh, like I said, I, every time I see things like this, I remember the six people in the Holiday Inn three and a half years ago. And I look back and I just see what God's about to do and it's just exciting. Amen. So you guys are definitely, definitely the reason why. It's not Pastor wife that makes a church happen it is the helps ministry that is the church really really th th another sermon you're going to hear today for some of you it'll just be another sermon but really you came you come here you plug in and you put your hand to something that's when you get blessed amen bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to what receive see if you just hear sermons and you're not plugging into the ministry you're just not going to get as much as the people who are serving in the church that's just how God does. He says, if you'll give out, I'll make sure you stay full. Yeah, but if you just come to receive, it's going to be more blessed if you give out than if you just come to get some. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So what we're doing today, we'll, we'll do that last song, or maybe a song. I don't know what, what we're going to do, but we, uh, we're going to go ahead and have church today. Amen? Turn it, go to the t title, Tim. We are on part four of our series, and I am excited about part four. I've been excited about part one, two, and three as well. Part, the title up there is, flip the switch, part four. It should be on, I should be on the uh, list of things on the screen. But how many of you remember, flip the switch, part one. The whole illustration is this. We're talking about the power of God. The power, the power of God. And the illustration is this, and I'll go over it very quickly. If you were sitting at home on your couch and no lights were on, the ceiling fan was not on, the air conditioner was not on, you would not call Gulf Power, you would not call Chelco and tell them, guys, I got a problem down here. My lights aren't on, my ceiling fan's not working, the heater is not on right now. I'm just calling out to you to see if you can get the power on at my house. Really, they're going to ask you some things first. They're going to say, Sir, have you tried everything on your side? Because really, our, our machine here shows that all of the power is coming all the way to your house. Have you done some things? And we said some of the basic things. If the lights aren't on at your house, you don't call the power company. You go and get up and go turn the what? Switch on. Say everybody say flip. flip. The switch. Have you flipped the switch? Because if you keep the switch to on, the power is flowing. I mean, I know the power is flowing right now. Nothing wrong with the power source. All you got to do is make sure the power is on. And what we've been doing, and we said we have to preach this because many, many, many people do not believe in this right here. Many people, well, you know, and they, somebody dies that they didn't think should have died. Somebody got sick that didn't get healed. They then, instead of believing that there's nothing wrong with the power, they put it off on God and say, well, it must not have been the will of God. Well, now it must, it must be something on our end that if we are checking, because God sent Jesus and Jesus was God coming back into the earth in His fullness in the Godhead, what? Bodily. In Christ, now we have everything that we're ever going to need. The Bible says He has given us all things pertaining to life and to godliness. So really, there is nothing wrong with God's power. We just have to make sure that we're always turned on. And if we're always on, now we understand God can use us to let His power flow through. Amen. Part one, we used as just an introduction to go rambling through the whole series as fast as we could. Then we slowed down and we started showing you that the Bible is clear that the power of God back in the earth was God's intent for Jesus coming to the planet. Amen. Jesus said this, that whoever receives Him, He gave what? Power to be called what? Sons of God. So really, you receive Jesus, you don't just get heaven, you get what? Power. He said the Holy Spirit, you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes. And you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in the what? Uttermost parts of the world. 
And Jesus just taught them, you're not going to receive tongues. You're not going to receive some spiritual experience. You're going to receive what? Power. Now you do the evidence of speaking in tongues, but so most people in our circles just believe, have you received the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? They think you receive tongues, you receive power. How many of y'all know if you know what you get, you can really use it? But if you just think you get in another language, oh, I can speak in another language now, that's not going to do you any good. If you don't know what comes with the Holy Spirit, he says you're going to receive what? Power. And that is why the book of Acts happened. That is why you see in the book of Acts, they go out and they do the acts of the apostles. Because they knew they had something. See, the church today, we don't really know what we got. Because Paul said this also. Another reason that, that we even know the Word of God was sent, says the, I'm not ashamed of the what? Gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the So now I got Jesus, which I received what? Power. Holy Spirit came and we received what? Power. The Word of God, the Gospel, the good news of Jesus came and it is the what? Power of God unto what? Salvation for all that will just believe. And there's your kicker right there. What you believe really affects everything. Your belief system is the most important thing you possess. You never again have to say, Lord, if it be Your will. You know that God's whole whole reason for getting Jesus to come live in you was that you might receive power. Amen. And if God has given you power, He wants you to use the power you have instead of crying out to the power company, there's not working. It's not working. Nothing's working for me. He's going to say, turn the switch on. Because it is working. Oh, it's working real good. I found out over 18 years, you know my testimony, drunk every day, lost $70,000 on the riverboats in Louisiana at 23 years old, met Jesus and found out that really I did not just get Jesus, I did not just get saved, I got the great I am living on the inside. The great I am that spoke to Moses out of the burning bush lives in me. I said, well, what are you? He said, I am your joy. I am your peace. I am your salvation. I am your strength. I'm your provision. I am everything you need right now. Not something you're going to get, but I am that. What? Right now. And he wants to empower us to live in victory every day. See, the problem is a lot of the church, we're so busy crying out to God to get him to move. If you're missing Wednesday nights, you're missing a lot of things too because we're talking about faith and power. The Bible says this, that Stephen was a man full of faith and power. In 1 Thessalonians it says he wants the work of your ministry to be fulfilled with faith and power. So really, what we're looking at is this. We're going to tie this Wednesdays and Sundays together. Because really, faith, the Lord showed me this, faith is power. Because once you get in faith, I always thought of it like this, if I can just get to believe in enough, then I'm going to be powerful. Now the Lord said, no, it's not, a, 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 it's not you building up enough faith to get more powerful. As soon as you get in faith, you get the power. Lady, we saw Wednesday night, as soon as the lady touched him, she said, I will be made whole. As soon as she did what she said, the power, he said, I felt power go out of me. Because somebody with faith touched him says there's plenty of people around him too. It says, they, he said, who touched me? They said, Lord, there's thousands of people around you. What do you, what do you mean, who touched you? He says, they said, there's, I mean, you imagine there was 25, 30,000 people following Jesus. And one got the power. See, there's a lot of people in the church. And a lot of people are around the power. But how many of y'all know you want to be the one who is walking in that power? So... All that's to say this introduction to today. Praise the Lord. Because what we came to Florida to do, don't make any mistake. We did not come to start another Rama church, another faith church, another de- have another Bible study. I was on the streets preaching every single day in high schools, in the hood, in the projects, and we were seeing people born again, left and right. And the Lord said, when the Lord told me to come here to pastor, I said, I don't want to. I don't want a bunch of people looking back at me, even just eight men and back at me, and then this show back up again Wednesday and do it again. Amen. Because I said, Lord, this is thing has got to get on the streets. And then he told me this. He said, Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. And the Lord told me, you've been fishing with a pole for a long time. He said, now I'm going to give you a net. 
And you're going to go out and be fishers of men and bring in the catch. And your net's going to break. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the, and like I say, it don't take everybody to get excited about it. It just takes about 12 good men. Stand up and say, you know what? I'm a fisherman with you. I'll go fishing with you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Now, today's message. Go over here to Matthew chapter 10. If you missed all the introduction, they're all on YouTube, and they're all on CD, so you need them. Amen? Because we've been laying the foundation that we are, I mean, there's no question the Bible says that we did not just get saved so we can go to heaven. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall what? Hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. I mean, I know that's pretty amazing comment right there. Oh, I wish that were true. Well, wishing don't make it work. You've got to believe it and then walk in it, and it works for everybody. It'll work for everybody that'll work it. Amen. Not say nothing can hurt me. No weapon can prosper. I'm totally victorious by the blood of Jesus. Totally victorious. Cannot lose. Losing's not an option. Why? Because I'm full of power. I did not get some little old uh, doctrine or some little old religion. I got God living in me. My goodness. This changed everything. Praise God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. Hallelujah. And as you go. Say go. We're going to clear up some things today that what this whole message, Lord's showing me we are right on time at this church. Perfect timing. I'm in the right place at the right time with the right people right now. Right now, that means before the foundations of the world, God knew I'd be standing in Niceville, Florida, by way of Louisiana, by way of Tulsa, by way back down through here, right over, and here we are today, right now, doing what God's called us to do. Amen. Amen. And he says, and what, we, what we've come to do is not preach a power message to even get you to get a chill bump about it. Now, I don't even want you to get stirred up and run around the building about it. You should, but that's not the intent and that's not the goal. Our goal is that we all might say go. go. See, if you don't catch this go spirit of this church, you're going to miss everything. Because we didn't come here to come. We came in here to go. Amen. Amen. We're the church on the move. We're going. We're not just coming to church. I'm a church that goes on the streets. Go into the highways and the hedges and compel some people to come in. Why? Because I got everything they're looking for. And you do too. Praise God. Now, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is coming one day. God's going to move by His Spirit one day. You're going to see another great move of God. No, no, no. I am a great move of God. Say amen. See, this is what we want you to get. Here's what He said. Tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is right here amongst you right now. When I walked in, God walked in. Yeah. What do you mean? God lives in me. That's what Paul said. He said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? I live, yet not I, but Christ in me. Yeah. Amen. Now what? I didn't get a little bit of Jesus. I got all of Jesus living in me. Yeah. Now he says right here that you're going to go into all the world with what? Now watch what he says. Tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. What's our message to the world? When we go out and do our outreaches in the, at the end of August, we're going to hit three. We're going to a prison, going to the detention center, going to the hood, going to set up and do our back-to-school stuff. Then minister will come in here. What are we going to do? We're going to tell them, God's not going to do something for you. He's already done it. Yeah, that's right. And all you got to do is receive what He's already done. Now watch what this says. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead people. <laughs> Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So what you have received will change the dead, will change the sick, and will influence the spiritual realm of demons. What did you get? Well, go up to verse 1. I don't have it on my tablet. I just know what it says. Verse 1 says this. 
Verse 1, they knew what they had. Watch what it says. you got leaves that we in the jungle still. But, what does that say? And we had, when He had called His twelve disciples, He gave them... What did He give them? Power. To take care of sickness. He gave them what? Power. Power. To take care of dead people they come in contact with. He gave them what? Power. Power. To deal with the demonic oppression. He gave them what? Power. And now these men knew what they had received. We saw a scripture last week that says we did not receive a spirit of this world, but we received the spirit which is of God who has made known to us all things freely given to us. How many of y'all glad you got it freely? I don't have to be good to get it. I receive it just like I am right now. How many of y'all know God can use anybody right here? And He's sending out people that were fishermen, that were cussing. Me. Jimmy, Peter was a cussing joker. He told Jesus. He said, I am. He said, I'm a sinful man. He says, I'll make you a fisher of me. I'm going to change everything about you. Amen. Don't get too religious now. Because if you think this is for church people or for good people or for high and mighty people, you're missing why we came here. We came here to go out with this power to see the dead raised. Yeah. Did not come to go to the beach. Everybody I went that knows us in Louisiana, oh, I bet the Lord did call you to Destin area down there, didn't he? I bet that must be nice, praise the Lord. We didn't come here to go to the beach. We come here to raise the dead. Yeah. Didn't come here to play golf, living on a golf course. Didn't come here to play golf, came here to raise the dead, see, see demons cast out and run darkness out from this whole region. Amen. Amen. And then all the way over to we'll stop at Jacksonville and then y'all can take it from there. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all can, well, praise the Lord. Y'all can have it down there. What we're going to do, we're coming to affect every. See, you affect everything when you realize what you have. Amen. Says he called the twelve. How many of y'all know God called you at some point? He called you to Himself. 9 September 19, 1995. He called me and He gave me power. Yes. To what? Go preach the gospel. Yes. See, a lot of people don't hear that part. You first have to preach. A lot of people are saying, well, let's just go, let's just go. we got to get people believing this right here. How I many of y'all know you? I mean, the Jesus, when the boy come by in the casket, I just want to see the video. The casket was coming by. Jesus reached back, touched the casket, and the boy climbed out of it. He t and then he tells his disciples, I give unto you power to raise the dead. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Freely you have what? Received. They knew in verse 1 what they had received. They received what? Power, power from power himself. Yeah. Right. So what you going to do with that? Well, he says, I want you to go. We believe in the power at my church. If you're going, you believe in it. Right. If you're hanging out in church, you ain't got it yet. You ain't got it yet. Amen. Come on, amen. Say amen. amen. Now go down to Matthew 9, 35. I just want to, we're going, we're, 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 I still kind of lay in a foundation, but I don't really know what direction we're going to go today. It's kind of foundational, but really kind of not a foundational thing today because we're going to get into looking at what it is, the purpose for living faith. A lot of people been coming to church to see the power. They want to see God move at the church house. Show me something, Lord. He's going to show you on the streets. We don't come in here for God to put a show on for us so we can go home. God's not performing for you. He wants to perform through you. <laughs> Amen. My goodness, I got not here to put on a show. For the longest time we've been to churches, we think I'm going to, I want to go see there's a mighty man, a mighty man of God that's coming through town. I want to go over and be in the meeting. You are a mighty man. See, that's what the enemy's trying to get you all messed up to thinking I need to go see because, you know, it's a television evangelist going to be in my area. I need to go have him lay hands on me. You can lay your hand on yourself. On. You as powerful as he is. Yeah. You just got to learn what you have received. Come on. Say amen. 9.35, Matthew 9.35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages. He went about all the cities, all the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and what? Every disease among the people. Keep going. 
Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was what? What moved him? He was moved with compassion. See, God will not let His power flow through you if He's not doing it through a loving atmosphere. See, He loved the people and He saw He was moved with what? Compassion for them because they were weary and scattered. How many of y'all know around you every day is weary and scattered people? No shepherd. That's what it says. They are sheep without a shepherd. You know everybody needs to be hooked up to the great shepherd. I mean, and they out there right now scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And the church should have enough compassion. Instead of playing our church stuff, go into church, do another cool song, do another decoration. Do another. Now, we ought to be looking to the world and going to them with what we have. Freely you have received, so freely what? Yeah. Give. Jesus went freely to give people what he had. That's how the lady with issue of blood got healed. She saw the love that drew her to Jesus, and that love activated that power. It says that Jesus went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing. See, a lot of people don't know this about Brother Hagin's meetings. What Brother Hagin used to do when Brother Hagin with the healing revival was going on, Oral Roberts, Brother Hagin, all the men of the old back, you know you had the healing revival. A lot of people don't understand that Brother Hagin, you, he would never lay hands on anybody until the, sec, the end of the second week of meetings. He had to sit them down and teach for two weeks, morning and night. And he says, we'll have a laying on of hand service at the end of the healing, the healing meetings. People would come, they just want hands laid on them. But really, if you don't teach people, then you are leaving people sitting there hoping that, at, oh well, they just lay hands on me. He's just another man. Lay. No, he wants you to understand what it is you're receiving. And it makes it easier to receive. Amen. So really, what I want our goal here is for you to do is for you to receive, number one, the teaching on this. Because if you don't get proper teaching on what you really received, then we're going to be like just another church that comes in and does another service that goes out. I'm, and that is, I will lock the doors. We'll shut it down. We'll go home. back. Go do something else. Our goal here is to go, go, go down here to Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9. We're going to jump around today. We're going to be out early. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're, we're looking for the crowd that really don't care what time it is. You worried about what time it is? You might not be the one God's going to use anyway. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Welcome to living faith. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Luke chapter 9 verse 1. Hallelujah. I want somebody to hear this and get up and go out there with it. Amen. That's our goal here too, is to come and not to come perform for anybody. If you see a performance, I hope you don't see a performance. If you see a religion, I hope you don't see religion. I want us to come in here and realize this is where I come and I get it revealed to me, all the things that I am in Christ, all that He is in me, and now it changes everything about my life. Amen. Amen. Go over here to Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He called His twelve disciples together and He gave them what? He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases. And He sent them. He sent them. How I many of y'all know He did not send them out unempowered. He sent them out empowered. He did not send them out insufficient. He sent them out sufficient for every job that come their way. I mean, I know if you woke up every day and said, God is sending me today. I didn't just wake up to live another Monday, another Tuesday. God sent me today to go out into the world to reach my world. And He's given me the power to get it done. Amen. What does that mean? What did we come here to do? Come here to send you out into the world with the power to change it amen. Amen. amen if the last time you thought about the message was last sunday you done missed the whole week's opportunity right. <laughs> praise god right. come on now praise the lord yeah. amen god wants to send you out he don't want you just to come in he's you're coming in so that you can be sent out I heard a lot of people say, well, they, were, they went, but where they sent? They went, but who sent you out? Jesus sent you out a long time ago. Amen. 
Oh, well, who are you under? I'm under Jesus. My God, the great anointed one. Praise God. And he sent out everybody. Say amen. amen. Don't need you to, uh, who, what. I'm, I, I, and yeah, I believe in serving under people and growing under people. We've done it for years and years and years. But really, if you don't know who really sent you, you won't go with any power anyway. Amen. I'm sent by Pastor uh, Kenneth Hagan, Kenneth E. Hagan, Mark Hankins, Kenneth Cope, and Creplo Dollar. No, I'm sent by Jesus. Yeah. And I got the power Jesus sent me with. Yeah. And when I know who sent me and what he gave me to go, I might do something. I might really do something. Praise the Lord. I'm not, see, here's the thing. Watch what he says. I'm sending you to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the what? Sick. Well, I wish that was for me. I wish that was for me. It says the 12 here. He called the 12. You know, that's the 12. The, 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 the power of God passed away with the last apostle. You know, we don't have the power today because he's talking to the 12 right here. This is the 12. It's the 12. That's not for us. Today we're, you know, in the last days, we just got to have less power than they had back then. We shouldn't have as much as they had. Today, you know, we don't have to heal the sick because we got doctors everywhere. There's hospitals today, so we don't need to go heal the sick. How many of y'all heard all the silliness before? How many of y'all know we ought to be operating in more power than they did? We're snowballed under 2,000 years of revelation. And if it's not getting us up and moving yet, you just getting stirred up and being super religious. But how many of y'all don't want religion? You want to walk in the power? Yeah, amen. Praise God. So, go over here to John 14. If your mindset's like that, we're going we're gonna to look at what the Word says. Who is this? Who, say, say, it's for me. Amen. Say, this is, for me. this is for me. He's sending me. Everybody say it with your mouth right now. He's sending He's me. me. Right now, right now, with the power, with the power to, the to the world, I'm a world changer. A world changer. The rest of my life, yeah. I walk in power. Walk Everywhere, I go, Everywhere I go, I'm powerful, I'm full, powerful. Of, full of power. Full of power. God, lives God lives in me. Right now, right. the great I am great lives in me. Lives in me. I'm all sufficient I'm all for all things. For all. I can abound, I can abound for, every for every good work. I give to every good work. I, I do every good work. Watch this right here in John 14. Praise the Lord. John 14, verse 12, if you think it's for the 12 apostles, remember this scripture. Most assuredly, Jesus says, I say unto you, he who believes. He who believes. In me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these, He will do them. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You have been told, told specifically by Jesus. This is not a request. He says right here, whoever believes. Uh, is there any believers in here? Because there's a lot of people in church that's not believers. But here's the deal. Right here, he says, those who what? Believe will do great works. He says the very same things you've been seeing me do, you will do the same thing. For who? It is for every person in the church that believes. If you think, now here's the thing. What I don't want you to do now is what a lot of churches are doing. They come, they want to see God do something. See somebody get hands laid on them. See a demonstration. You need to be a demonstration. Glory to God. I said you are a demonstration. That's the problem today. I want to see the demonstration with signs and wonders. Be a demonstration with signs and wonders. Why? I believe. But see, here's the thing. People that don't believe don't see nothing. Is it the power is short? Is it the power is not reaching us? Or might it not? Might it be that we just really don't? Believe that if I go out and do what Jesus did, I'll see what Jesus saw. Oh, little old me, little old me. He said he's going to do it through you. 
just told him. He says, I will do it. I will do it. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. You lay hands on them. I know you're not perfect. I know you got a little sin in your life. But just go lay hands on the sick. The sick shall recover. I will work through you. Amen. The enemy will keep you off the streets all kind of ways. But what I want you to understand is what we want to do is go, preach the gospel, do the works of Jesus, watch Him work right through us. When we go touch them, Jesus just touched them. Amen. How many of y'all want to see yourself doing the works of Jesus? Who's going to do it? Believers. Not the, not, 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 not the great gifted, oh, he's got such an anointing on him. I need the anointed man to come through. No, I need a believer to come through. Amen. See, Pete, your friends are waiting on you to show up in their life. Right. Your friends are waiting on you to go to work this week. Your friends are waiting, and now, my thing, the revival we're going to have here is not going to be because people are running to the church. It's going to be because the church is running to the Word. Amen. What are we doing? I'm going out to do the works of Jesus this week. I'm getting filled up with truth, and the truth is making me what? Free, and I'm going to make other people free. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> I might get excited. It's in just a second. I might get excited. Why? Because God will work through John, right now, Mary the same way. Same Jesus working the same way. Josue, the same way. Trish, Jesus works through you exactly like He works through Pastor Glisten right here. Amen? Everybody has the same Jesus. Everybody. Now our goal in starting this church, I promise you, if it just becomes a place where we come down here and I'm waiting on somebody, I'm waiting on the man of God to show up, be the man of God, and lay hands on all the people in the church, I think we ought to be laying hands on one another. Right. We might do an altar call in just a second. All the sick people got something wrong with your body, the person next to you is going to lay their hand on you. Because we think, oh, I'm waiting to get it. No, you ought to realize right now, you already got it. Now if two or three of you agree with the power working through you, now what about all these powerful people agreeing together? Amen. Boom, everything starts working. Amen. Can't be defeated. Man, I, I got too much. I got too much not to go over. I can never go under. Amen? Amen. Why? Because I, I did not get a religion. I got the power of God. Yeah power of God to see every dream, every desire, everything, every vision that God ever gives me, He's empowered me to bring it to pass. Amen. Everything at your house, at this house. How many of y'all know you ought to see things at your house that affects this house and every vision? Why? God gives you vision. He gives you a vision. He wants you to bring it to pass. And He gives you the power to make it happen. See, we think just the power of God is for, for just raising the dead, just for seeing a foot grow out, just for seeing something like that. But really, power really is for a changed family and a changed generation. On, amen. amen. If you just saw a church service, all you saw was just, could be even an emotional rundown experience where everybody, I want to see a whole family change and your grandkids change forever. Oh, amen. amen. I mean, I know when the power of God really shows up, you can feel it for generations. Amen. We've said it before. We go over that. You go to Chernobyl. Chernobyl, you still go over there with that detector. And I mean, that's years ago. And they go, and all of a sudden, power. You don't see anything. But for years ago, there was a power spill of the nuclear fallout that happened. The nuclear fallout is still there. And all of a sudden, is nothing visible, nothing seen, but the power still there. How many of y'all want your second generation grandchildren? You know what? What happened in me? And a fallout of generations. Hallelujah. Yeah. What happened for me changed my grandkids. Amen. I didn't get a little something. I got power. And you know what? People can look at you, think you're weird, think you're crazy. But you know what? My grandkids going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> you can look up at me like I'm weird all day long. What's he talking about? I'm talking about changing the world, starting at my house, my grandkids. Everybody going to get up. Everybody going to get in on it. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm talking about real power. And you know what? You might not see anything. Don't see anything. But you're full of it. Amen? How I many of y'all know you go to the dentist? They make you wear this big old jacket. Put that big jacket on you, and it's the big old heavy jacket. They say, we're going to put this in your mouth. And all of a sudden, what you got to wear all that stuff for? Because there's some power about to come in your mouth. And they, don't want, they want to make sure it don't get nowhere else. 
You see anything? No. You come in. See, everybody wants to see something. They don't want to be something. See, you got this now. You be this now. Glory to God. Because go over here. We'll finish right here. Glory to God. We come here to raise up some people that want to be a demonstration. If you come to see something, I hope you get disappointed. Yeah, I hope you're disappointed. I didn't see what I wanted to see. Go be something then, and you'll see it. Amen. It is good. It is good because that's when you're going to really see the power of God. See, God's not going to have you come to a church. Just, and we believe, I, I have seen blind eyes open. Laid hands on a blind man that could not see. Danielle was in the room. We were in Peru. Guy was blind, could not see anything. Laid hands on him. Had an interpreter. Said in Jesus' name, be healed in Jesus' name. All of a sudden, he goes, I can see. I can see. First thing I said, I was about 25, 26, 27 years old. I said, really? I said, for real? He goes, I can see. I can see. And he was saying it in Spanish, and I didn't know what he was saying. But I said, for real? That really, I mean, it messed me up. I thought I was going to lay hands on him, go down the line, and nothing was going to happen. Get it later. Power's in you. It's going to work later. Oh, we heard that a lot. Have we? Well, the power's working. Praise the Lord. Now, all of a sudden, this guy, I can see. He came down believing. We got in agreement. Power showed up. Amen. The blind were seeing. Amen. Had a lady paralyzed in the projects in Minden, Louisiana, on the right side of her body. She could not walk. She was in a wheelchair. Laid hands on her. She, I said, you believe God can heal? She said, I believe right now. I said, well, what we're going to do, we're going to lay hands on you, and the power of God is going to be going into your body, and you're going to be healed right now. Because we came in here with the power of God, right up in your little old living room in the project. And I laid hands on that lady in the project. And all of a sudden I said, well, now get up. She goes, well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And her paralyzed. All of a sudden, what you going to do? Get up. She goes, Ethel, Ethel. Somebody was in the kitchen. She's hollering, come look, come look. The Lord healed my body. Yeah, I said, well, ma'am, I'm very anointed. And I come with a special anointing. It's a healing anointing I have. And a lot of people don't have it. What I got. And really, I, I, I just, I'd like for you to understand that, I mean, this just ain't for everybody. It's just for select few people. Now, you know what I told her? I said, any believer stands up, walks in the power of God, don't have to go see a demonstration. You can go be a demonstration. Right. Seen revival break out in every city, every school, every village, every town we ever been to, ever. Why? Because the power goes with you wherever you go. You don't need anything else. You got it all right now. Yeah. Only thing is, if you, just take, if you just take good notes on it, you won't see it. If you just amen it, you won't see it. If you get excited and run around the church about it, you may not see it. But if you'll go be it, you will see it. Amen. Now go over here. Let's leave. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Because that's what I want you to understand. I do not care. I don't care if we... See, people want to come. And that's what I want you to get more than anything is we want you to go and be what Paul's about to say right here. Right here. For the longest time, I've said, I've heard, and I said, well, Lord, I need to hear about how to go and just to be this. And we talked about this, uh, uh, Carl and I and, 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 and Roy, but I'm wanting everybody to see this right now. I, I as the vision, the Lord gave me the vision for this church. And he said, do not let them get comfortable hearing the message. So if you think you get uncomfortable in here, God told me to make you uncomfortable. He said, don't let them get, un don't let them get comfortable just hearing a good teaching. Because people are being taught to death right now. Right. Oh, I got another good teaching. Got great notes. Got CDs all over the house. We got a plenty of that going on, don't we? Right, right. I'm listening. I got faith come by here and hearing by the Word of God. It don't mean 20 years of hearing you ought to have some faith to get up right now and go do something. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. My speech and my preaching <laughs> were not with persuasive words or with just human wisdom. Paul said, but in demonstration, say demonstration, demonstration. of the Spirit and of power. power. Say power. Say it like you really say in power. Say power. power. 
See, Paul said everywhere that I went, I was a demonstration of power. Oh, we hear it and we say, well, that's the Apostle Paul. I want to go to a church that demonstrates the power. You ought to want to demonstrate the power. See, you miss it a million miles. If you see this and say, I want to go to a full gospel church that demonstrates the power. The demonstration of the power is so that you can be the demonstration. Not go look for a demonstration, but go be the demonstration. Because the same Spirit is the same Spirit you have. Paul said the same Spirit that raised up Jesus quickens my mortal body. The very same Spirit, the very same power Paul had to go be a demonstration. You have to go be a demonstration. But people don't want to hear this because the responsibility is not on God to move now. It's on us to move. And if I got to move, wait a minute, I want God to move. He's going to tell you, you got the power, go move. Go demonstrate the power of God to the world. This scripture right here gets totally thrown out of context because we think that we just ought to see a demonstration of, of power. No. Not for this church. Now maybe everywhere, this church, we're going to be a demonstration of power. It won't be a 100%, but some of you are going to catch this and say, you know what, I'm about to go demonstrate in Walmart right now. I'm going to find somebody to go talk to that looks depressed. I'm going to see a demonstration of joy. I'm going to go find somebody that looks lost, and they're going to be found. What's happening? I'm demonstrating the power. I'm not going to see a performance. Amen? Amen. Glory to God, I'm getting happy. Why? Because it's not you doing it anyway. It's the spirit of power flowing through you. Amen. Jesus said, I will do this through you. If you believe it enough, you'll go do it. Yeah. He says, go preach. Go to the streets. Go on the world. You'll receive power to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And who, who needs salvation? The lost. Yeah. We've been talking to the church forever. I'm talking to, I, and like I said, Lord told me, don't get them comfortable just hearing you preach. See, because some people don't like it when they get uncomfortable. You're challenging me, Pastor. Yeah, because God has already moved and He's not moving again. I used to write an article in the paper back in Louisiana said, God is not going to heal you. And He's not going to bless you. I got, I got phone calls and I got texts and I got everybody in town. What, about you? what does that title mean? It's trying to get you to read it. But it says, He has blessed us with every blessing in spiritual places in Christ Jesus. And by His stripes, you, you were healed. So God's not going to do anything for you. He's already done it. And what does He want us to do is just to believe that we have received. And Angela said it before service. Believing just, just looks like something. I mean, I know if you're a believer, you got a little bit of attitude. Man, you got a little bit of attitude. When you walk in, everybody goes, look like you. We got some confidence walked in the room. If you can't do it, I can do it. Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I touch is going to work. Right. Minister raps about Everything I touch is going to work. No weapon formed against me to prosper means I always win. Right. Amen? Amen? I always win. So if you're in the room with a bunch of losers, you come in. Now, we, they all coming up there to win with you. Because you know what? Nowhere I go will we lose. What if you had that kind of attitude? You know what? We go on the streets today. We take the revival with us right now. I'll go be a demonstration in Crestview today. I'll go up here, go down to Fort Walton and be a demonstration. What's this living faith going to be? We're going to be a demonstration of the power of God. This changing generations. Now, we're not even going on the streets to put a show on. We'll see the blind see. We'll see the dead raised. We're going to see generations affected. Amen. What does the power come for? Not to put on a show. Not to put on a show. Not to go to find the latest and greatest, most anointed man. Comes to change your family and your kids. Amen. How many of y'all are glad your family and kids have heard the gospel and everything changed? How many of y'all believe right here? Because he said those who believe will do the works I do. In believers right here. Ready to go do the works of Jesus. See what Jesus did? It ought to be a lot of what you're doing. Amen. Any believers? That's what we came to, to, to do. Send out believers filled with the power. Not to bring them in. Now we've got to bring you in so we can fill you up, so we can show you what you got, so you can go out. Right. But if you get comfortable just coming in to sitting down, then we missed the mark a million miles. Yeah. Amen. 
So uh, believers, one more time. I like how Angela said it. She said, believing looks like something. And I love going here at the end of service. First Peter chapter 1, jump over there real fast. You, none of y'all have to go. I just want to read it just because I like to read it. Because believing just looks like something. You say you believe? How many of y'all believe? Yeah. I'm a believer. I believe. I believe. Well, praise God. I believe God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. I don't have it on my tablet. I just want to go here, just because this is a good way to end church. <laughs> that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than what? Gold that perishes, though it be tested with fire, may be found to praise. And... Honor and glory at the revelation of Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. Verse number 8 says, Whom having not seen, you what? Love, though now you do not see Him, yet believing. I do not see... How many of you have ever seen Jesus in the flesh? I never have seen Him. Yet, I'm a believer. Yet what? Believing that the one that I'm not even seeing is living right now, not in heaven, He's living in me. Yet, believing. I hadn't seen Him, but He's been working through me 18 years. I hadn't seen Him, but He's given me all my desires. I've never laid eyes on Him, but He's working every day in my life. I've never seen Him, yet I believe God. How many of y'all believe? Well, look at this, because it says, Yet believing, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. So believing, you can't say you believe. We're going to have to see you believe. Because believing looks like something. See, believers wake up rejoicing with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Why? Verse number 9, the first two words say receiving, or the first three words, receiving the what? End. How many of y'all know between the believing and the receiving, there is something taking place? What are we coming in here to do? I'm coming in here to celebrate and I like how Pastor Mark Angus says it. He says, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. Amen. If you will celebrate, we'll understand you're going to demonstrate. Hallelujah. Well, hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And between the believing and the receiving is rejoicing with joy. Everybody put a smile on right now, even if you don't feel that smile. To say, I put a fake one on right now, and I'm gonna rejoice with joy. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Fake it till you make it. Hallelujah. You don't feel happy? Go ahead and get happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a bigger crowd to get happy, Pastor. I, it might be wise small crowd today so that you can get happy right here, right now. I don't need a whole bunch of people. Just need a few people. Get happy. Hallelujah. Glory. Go back to verse number 8, Tim. Verse number 8 says, Whom have not seen you love, though now you do not see him yet. What? Believing you rejoice with joy. I'm looking for the quiet church. You turned in the wrong building. You, that's, there's a lot of other turns you can make. But this is not that. This is what the Bible looks like. And we are believing and we're going to be receiving. Hallelujah. What? The end of what we're believing for. Why do you rejoice? I'm not trying to get God to do something. I'm rejoicing about what He's already done. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to get God to move. I'm rejoicing He already moved. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm not praising the power down, but when I praise, power shows up and manifests. Why? Because it's in me. Stirring up. Bible, that's why Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift. Stir yourself up. I mean, I know if you get chocolate milk and you put the chocolate in it, and it, you know if you don't stir it up, it'll go. And my, down, down, down. You know what you're going to have to do? God's not going to stir you up. Your pastor might even not always be around. Your best TV preacher you like might not even be on TV. 
You might have to pick yourself up like David. He stirred himself up. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice. You're going to receive everything God has for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many people got in right now sickness of any kind in your body right now? Sickness in your body right now? Anybody? Raise your hand. You got sickness in your body right now? Two. Anybody else? Three. Anybody else sick? Three sick in your body. Praise the Lord. It comes to all of us. Amen. Nobody's immune to symptoms coming. They just can't hang. Amen. So anybody, we got four people right now. Leave your hands up. Leave your hands up. I want everybody to look around right now. You are a demonstration. Right now, Carl, will you go lay hands right now on Louise? Uh, turn around right now. Uh, Ken, go lay hands on Joe. Praise the Lord, you're full of the power of God. Right now, Angel, you lay hands on Mary right now and put the power of God. Y'all going to agree together? You lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. Hallelujah. Who else? Right now, Mildred. Mildred right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josue, lay hands on Mildred. Josue, lay hands on Mildred right behind you. Right now, you, you, full, you just like Jesus laying hands on her right now. Lay hands on her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Let's rejoice. Thank you, Father, right now. They are healed by the stripes of Jesus. They were healed. We thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' mighty name that your word is working mightily. We thank you that your gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all that will believe. We thank you. Father God, we believe right now and we are a demonstration right now of the power of God. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank You. Symptoms in their body have to leave. We bind You in Jesus' name. We loose the power of God in Jesus' name. Whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we loose is loosed. In the name of Jesus, healed now. In Jesus' name. Thank You, Father. Give You the glory for it in advance. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice. 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 Fruit of your lips. The fruit of your lips. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe in this room you may not know Jesus. You're excited over it. Well, we're excited because you're here to hear this gospel. And here's the deal. You may not be born. You might have been in church your whole life. Preached at the church, associate pastor, eight years back home. Guy sat in that church six years on the almost back row. Gave an altar call one Sunday. I knew him, called him by name. He come walking down to the front, said, Roddy, he said, I've never been saved. I don't even know if I'd go to heaven. He said, I want to know. I've been hearing the words good that I'm hearing, but I want to know Jesus. You might be in here today, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Today, that's your day. Today, right now. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Now is a time of the Lord's favor. The acceptable time of the Lord's favor is right, right now. You can be a good person and still not be saved. See, the sad thing is a lot of people are trying to be good enough. I, I've been doing this 15, 16 years preaching. Back in Louisiana, I asked a guy, I said, I asked plenty of people, you going to heaven? They said, well, I'm, 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 tr I'm trying, I'm being a good person. That tells me they have no idea how to get in. Jesus, we just read a scripture. He says, freely you have received. You can't get good enough to be saved. You only accept what God is giving. He's giving salvation, which is the power for everything to change in your life. If you're not sure today that you're born again, you're not sure you're going to heaven. I, first time I heard the gospel, I was 23. Don't think, well, I'm a little older. I can't do it right now. It's your day. It's your time. Everything can change. Man, you thought you, I mean, this is real joy I'm talking about. Real peace. Real wisdom. Real revelation. Real life. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Anybody in here want to make sure today you're born again? You don't want to walk out of here not knowing. Just taking a look around. I, I won't give an altar call without giving this opportunity. Greatest thing you'll ever do. Everybody in here will th start just, just clapping and dancing as soon as you say, I want to make Jesus my Lord right now. Greatest thing I ever did in my life. Way better than marriage, way better than kids. The best thing I ever did was got saved. And people ask me today, how you doing, Pastor? I say, I'm just glad I'm saved. The Bible says, restore unto me the joy of my... If you lose the joy of your salvation, you lost it.
Amen. I'm just glad I got saved. I'm glad I accepted what He was given. And if you hadn't done that, I want to pray this right now. And I want everybody to pray this prayer with me right now, out loud. Say, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Your word says, if I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth, that Jesus is Lord, I will be saved. I do believe, I do confess, that Jesus is Lord of my life. And I am born again. I am a child of God. I am filled with power right now. Everything changes. I change. My kids change. My grandkids change. Everything changes because God lives in me now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Rejoice one more time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We went a little bit over, but not really. A little bit under. But you guys, if you could, we do need a couple of people to help today to tear this stuff down. We don't want to do it, just start ripping. We want to do it neatly. Miss Robin, see, Miss Robin, stand up. Oh, you're standing up. I'm sorry. Uh, hold your hand up. <laughs> stand up, Miss Robin. Now, 